Let's take a look around Pi System Explorer to see where you can start contextualizing and analyzing your Pi System data with Asset Framework. This will be a brief overview, as most of these topics have dedicated videos. If you're going to follow along, you should have already installed Pi System Explorer, the client for AF, and set up connections to your AF server and AF database. If you haven't already opened Pi System Explorer, you can usually find it under the Start menu, under Programs, Pi System, and go ahead and open the 64-bit version. In the top left corner, you'll see the AF server that you're currently connected to, as well as the current database. The navigator pane in the lower left of the window is what defines what portion of PSE you'll be working in. In this case, we're going to start with Elements. When Elements is selected, notice that we can now browse our Asset Framework hierarchy in the upper left corner. In this case, my plant, line one, and I can see my pumps and reactors. If you have an empty database, this pane may be mostly empty except for the parent element. This is also where you'll be able to create new elements in the browser pane to build your hierarchy. Notice when I click on an element, the viewer pane changes. In this case, let's start with the general tab. When I click on a different element, you'll see that it updates. This is where you'll be able to edit the name of an element and be able to see what template it's created from. It's often important to know if an element was created from a template, so you can determine if you should edit its attributes here or if they should be edited in the template instead. I'll show you a bit later on in the library where you can edit templates. Let's go ahead and click on the Child Elements tab. And you can see all of the children here, which are the same as shown in the left. However, this pane allows for easy searching within this part of the hierarchy shown here. If we go ahead and click on the Attributes tab, you can see all of the attributes associated with the element that's selected on the left, their current values and timestamps. If I click on a different element, you'll see that this pane updates, as shown here, to be specific to the element that's selected. You may want to try and create a new attribute for this template, and I'll right-click here to try and do that, but it's not an option for this specific element. That's because it's created from a template, and Allow Extensions is not enabled for this specific element. We'll instead have to go and edit it in the template. Notice in the top right, you can choose how to group items that show up in this pane. You can see that Reason Code is under the category Analytics, and you can see how grouping can be very useful when you have a large number of attributes. The configuration of the attributes is controlled in the pane, which I'll open up here, and you can see the category that it's assigned to. This is also where you can see the unit of measure, and you can see that it's currently referenced as a PyPoint data reference, and the PyPoint is shown here. The Notification Rules tab would show any notifications that are currently configured. This only applies to notifications 2016R2 or later. If you are using Notifications 1.x, there would be a separate tab in the Navigator panel in the lower left, and you would have to use the 32-bit version of Pi System Explorer. Finally, the Analysis tab shows the configured calculations running through the Analysis service for this particular element, and if they are currently running. This also includes setting up triggers for event frames. For instance, I'll click on the pump downtime event frame, click on the expression, and you'll notice here that it's grayed out and I can't edit it. That's because this pump is created from a template. To double check that again, we can go to the general tab and notice that the template that's used is pump. We've sure been talking a lot about templates, so let's go ahead and see where those are configured. Let's go into the Library tab and the Navigator panel. And let's start with Templates. If I go to Element Templates, click on Reactor, and click on Attribute Templates, we can see the attributes associated with the Reactor template. In this case, there's only one, and that is the temperature. This way, if I create new Reactor elements, they'll all have the same attributes that are defined in this template. This will allow me to quickly build up multiple assets and map them to their appropriate type, pie tags, or other data references. Also, if I edit these templates, edits would update all the other assets made from this template. As an advanced topic, we've already mentioned Allow Extensions as one way to add attributes to an element made from a template, which you can see as an option here. Another way, depending on your assets you are contextualizing, would to be instead create a derived template. In this case, the Reactor template contains the temperature attribute, 
but we have a derived template called reactor with outlet sensor, which contains these other attributes as well. If I create a reactor from this template, it will include the outlet sensor attributes in addition to the attributes associated with the base reactor template. This provides more standardization than just using allow extensions on these reactors. Templates are also great if you need to make a change since it's propagated to all the existing elements created from that template. For instance, if you have 100 pumps and want to create a new efficiency calculation, you can add it once here on the Analysis Templates tab, and it's automatically added to all of your pumps. An additional type of template you may be using would be event frame templates. Event frames define important time periods in your process. For instance, the time frame of a specific batch or downtime events for an oil rig. The event frame template defines what information is collected about that event besides just the start and end time. In this case, we're collecting additional information on reason codes, the asset line and manufacture. We're collecting reason code information, which is configured to pull information from an attribute at the start time of the event frame. Enumeration sets can somewhat be thought of as being similar to digital sets and system management tools. You can configure an attribute to have a value type of enumeration set, and it can be restricted to only be assigned values in that enumeration set, in this case on or off. You can also use an enumeration set for PyPoint data references. If your tag contains a value of 1 and it's assigned to an enumeration set in AF, AF will instead display that that tag is off instead of displaying a value of 1. Tables store information which can be referenced from element attributes. In this case, I have a table of manufacturers and serial numbers. My element templates are defined to pull in the correct manufacturer and serial number from this table based on the line number and pump type. If I go back to elements and check out my inlet pump, I can see that the manufacturer is pump you up as was defined in the table. Tables can also be linked to external sources, and this information can be pulled in once or on a scheduled refresh in case the external source is updating. Those connections are defined in the library under Table Connections. And finally, categories allow you to organize your asset framework information as we saw earlier. This may not be important to you when you're just getting started, but can really help when the number of elements, attributes, or other items shown here need to be organized in a better way than just as a list. If I click on Attribute Categories, I can see that Analytics is included in this list of categories, which we saw earlier was being used for one of the Inlet Pump Reason Code attributes. We've now gone over the Elements and Library tabs in Navigator, and let's quickly take a look at a few more tabs. Notifications rules for 2016 R2 and analysis can be enabled, disabled, backfilled, or recalculated in the management tab. In previous versions, this tab was called analysis. A search feature is included in case you have a large number of analysis, and this is very useful when you start building a large number of assets in bulk using templates and need to manage all the analysis and notifications associated with those assets. If I click on Event Frames tab, this isn't where you'll be setting up your analysis to create event frames. That's back under each specific element or the element template and its associated analysis tab. Instead, this is where you'll search for and view event frames, which could come from other sources beyond just those created through AF. If needed, you can also create event frames manually here. Normally, you'd right-click on Event Frame Search, select New Search, and then the Search dialog box would come up to define the search criteria. And as part of standardization of assets, AF can automatically convert units of measure so you can quickly compare your assets, even if the inf incoming information isn't from the same unit of measure. There are different classes defined from which you can convert between for your units of measure, and this is also where you define new custom units of measure if needed. And finally, there's a Contacts tab where you'll define the users who will be assigned to receive notifications. A few other important notes about PSC. Many of the edits you'll make to existing items or when creating new items results in checking out the item from the AF database. You'll need to check in the item to save the items to the database. As an example, let's create a new line under plant. 
and you can see in the lower left that it says it's currently checked out to me. I'll need to go ahead and check in these changes before anyone else will be able to edit them, which I can do right here. Another useful item is to use refresh here on the toolbar. If attribute information has updated since the last time it was refreshed, clicking refresh on the toolbar will force it to update with the most recent values. As an example, let me click on inland pump, and we would be able to force these values to update by clicking refresh. The toolbar also includes some commonly used buttons, depending on what is selected in the left panes. In this example, when elements is selected in the lower left, the new elements button appears in the toolbar. The available buttons will change depending on what you're working on in PySystem Explorer. At the far right of the toolbar, a search pane is available. The context in which you're searching will change depending on what you are working on in PySystem Explorer. In elements, for example, this can be useful when you need to find a specific element in a large AF hierarchy, but you're not sure exactly where it's located. And finally, under the View menu, you can enable the palette, which has various options. Currently, Element Templates is selected, and this allows me to drag and drop element templates from the palette into my AF hierarchy to create new elements. If you were instead editing PyPoint data references for attributes, it might be more useful to use the Take Search palette. And then you can drag and drop tags onto their appropriate attributes. Now that you have a better idea about what's possible and where you can complete certain tasks in PySystem Explorer, you can explore other videos and playlists to learn how to implement what's important to you to get the most out of your PySystem data using Asset Framework.